Welcome to the Empowering Industry Podcast, a production from Empowering Pumps and Equipment as the voice of the pump and related equipment industry. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Empowering Industry Podcast. I'm your host, Charlie Matthews, and like every week, I'm excited to be here and bring you an awesome guest. Uh, this week, I just, I think it's amazing, honestly. Uh, when I get to go out and travel the world at these different trade shows or plants or whatever, I meet the coolest people. Uh, but it's also really cool when they remember you. So uh, recently, we were at the Hydraulic Institute and I got reconnected. So uh, Thomas, I will just let you jump on here and introduce yourself to everybody else. Thanks, Charlie, for having me on. Um, yeah, my name is Tomas Dobrovolskis, and I've been in the pump industry for 16 years. So I started my career out in Yeomans Chicago Corporation. I worked there for seven years, and then I did a little bit of industrial fan design for a couple of years. And then I've been with Hydrostall, my current company, for the last eight years. Tell us a little bit about your work there. So <clears throat> I'm a mechanical engineer. So I went to school for mechanical engineering and my day to day, I've kind of worked up the rank here at Hydrostall. So right now my title is vice president of engineering and sales. And my work here is to try to get the best pump out there in all the municipalities and industrial applications. Yeah. And I love that. And we'll talk about this a little bit more about the best pump. Uh, I love how you describe it that way. And um, I just want to know a little bit more kind of about how you got into the industry. Why did you choose to be a mechanical engineer? Sure. Um, I loved science. I liked, I enjoyed building things as a kid. I was really good at math. So, you know, and I enjoyed cars. So I said, all right, I'm going to do mechanical engineering. I got done and I realized that the car industry, you're not designing the whole car. You are doing one component. And so I just applied everywhere. And the first job I had an interview for, I got, and that was at Yeoman's Chicago Corporation. And as everyone knows, once you get into the pump world, you kind of get stuck um, in a good way. Because I think this industry <clears throat> is very unique because it's not flashy, but the pump is the heart of every wastewater treatment plant, right? It is the one that is probably the least expensive out of all the equipment there, but it's the one that, that the station relies on. If you don't have those pumps, that water is not moving. So I think it's, you know, kind of like I like to say, like myself, it's hardworking. It's always there. It's not necessarily flashy, but it gets the job done. Yes. And we love the pump industry and all of the pump talk uh, being vital to life. Uh, we love to say around here. Uh, so we we are talking the same language and I think our, our audience loves pumps as well. But, you know, I, I thought it was unique. Um, first of all, um, love Chicago, right? We have that in common in that, that area um, and being there for um, pr probably uh, the WEFTEC or either AHR. Those are the two shows that, that we kind of see each other, but with that, why the why did you stay in this like wastewater industry? Why the pump industry? Um, well, it's a it's a it's a stable uh, product, right? There's not necessarily highs and lows. People always need pumps, and I think you know the the beauty of it is just I spent the whole weekend telling my family about the pump world. Um, so I don't know how bored they were, but I was explaining the lift stations and the process. And really, I enjoy providing one piece of it. And it's such a big piece. It's not, you know, just a hood of a car. It's not just a little knob on a car. It's the full piece. So to be able to design and work and pick the, the right application, I mean, I still steal some of the sales inbox things that come in because I want to pick some of these applications. I enjoy finding the right fit and saying, oh, look, this speed, this horsepower, um, or this size, I, I enjoy that aspect of it. And working here for the last eight years, I've kind of gone from senior engineer to vice president, but we got to build a test floor here. We, we integrated and 
put an ERP system together. We made CAD drawings. We do you know, live testing now on the shop floor. So to see all that grow, like every day there's something new, something different, and I enjoy it immensely. Um, that is so true. And that leads me to the next thing I want to talk about. And that is this cost calculator that you've created. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. you know, I know that there are many out there, you know, we've, we've promoted them before, but yours is different. And I'd love to hear kind of why you created that and how it's different. Sure. So yes, there's a lot of total cost of ownership calculators out there. There's a lot of white papers, the one thing that white papers don't allow you to do is run actual numbers. You know, it's really nice and interesting and educational and you read it and you learn from it, but then you go, how does it apply to me? So then you look at the total cost of ownership sheets that are out there and you go, wow, I need to know this cost. I need to know this cost. I need to know this cost. I don't know. I just know I've picked this pump. I know how much it costs. I know how much my energy costs, but I don't know if a pump clogs how many times it's going to clog? I don't know. What is it going to cost me? You know, you almost have to do side calculations to, to use some of these total costs of ownerships. So what I've created is an easy to use sheet that you put in the price of the pump. You put in how many times you think the pump is going to clog. You put in the efficiencies. And so it looks at energy. It looks at efficiency. It looks at those hidden costs. And I think a lot of people look at the initial price. And really initial price is never the factor. You should always consider the hidden costs, the energy costs, the maintenance costs, all of those things. And with actual numbers, not just a white paper that you go, how does it relate to me? 28% uh, you know, maintenance costs, what does that mean to me? If I bought a $300,000 pump or if I bought a $10,000 pump, you know, it's really hard to, get actual numbers from it. And that's why I feel like that was missing. And that's why I created it. Have you seen this help your existing clients? Yes. You know, so engineers especially can take a look and say, okay, I have this type of equipment, right? I have um, semi-open impeller. I have vortex pumps. I have chopper pumps. Let's compare side by side. What does that mean? You know, because every pump has a fit. And really, it's analyzing it and, and taking the initial cost out of it, taking um, and understanding the hidden cost. So our customers now can use this as a tool to evaluate different product types and see what is it going to cost if the pump runs five years, if it runs 20 years, if it runs 30 years. And then how much of the day does it run? Does it run 95% of the day? Or does it run 5% of the day? You know? Those are things that you need to consider to know the whole picture. Yeah. And I think it's a great tool. And I think, you know, we've heard that over the years so much, right. Of just, you know, understanding what the real costs are for, for having these pieces of equipment and maintaining them. Uh, I think that is such a key. And, and some of this um, world that we're in is not, you know, sparkly, you know, we don't, it's not exactly. dis disaster, uh, but sometimes it can be. And so it's like, if those things happen, can you manage them? Do you have the budget to manage them? You know, did you pick the right pump? Um, and so I, I love that you kind of said, you know, you kind of steal some of these, um, sales sheets that come in and like, you, you're still in it. You still love, uh, solving those problems for, for everyone. Um, now being, um, in the, the management role now, you are responsible for a team yep. and, um, you know, that's a little different than, you know, doing that kind of customer care. Um, how, how do you think that kind of understanding this back end and the process that they go through has helped you lead the team? Um, you know, <clears throat> education is very important. And in the, in this industry, like I've been here 16 years, I see, um, some of the old generation retiring. And so that education is leaving. And so you need to internally as a company create processes and training. And that's why I jo we joined HI. That's, um, that's where you know, we, we met again. Um, but I think it's so important to set up the training and you know, to work with your team to understand and get in and do some of the day-to-day -day stuff. Because once you change positions and elevate yourself, you can't create better tools. You can't create better efficiencies 
unless you, unless you get your hands dirty. So I enjoy going in and understanding it and the dynamic, right? For managing people, it's a lot, it's so much different. As an engineer, I love running numbers. I love calculations and it's easy. Um, people, you have to adapt to each person. You have to figure out what motivates them. So it's a much harder dynamic and it's, uh, it's but it's a challenge I enjoy because if you have a great chemistry and a great team culture, then everyday work is fun. Yes, I absolutely agree with that. And I, I think you do that. Um, we loved um, seeing your display um, that you you kind of take around the product and show how it works, uh, but also just, you know, interacting with you at that level. And I, I think that you're going to be uh, plugged in. Uh, didn't you already like jump in and start engaging in these association yes. meetings? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. My first one, I signed up. I didn't know exactly what I was signing up for, but Alex um, from HI needed, nobody was volunteering. So I jumped in and actually had to uh, send that modification uh, for, for those standards already. So it's it's challenging, but at the same time, it's good because you know we're then getting involved in creating the new standards and involved in the industry. You know, I kind of did wish I would have done this 16 years ago and been part of the whole process and HI and, and the bigger community, but you get so busy, but then you realize you're never going to get less busy. So you just got to prioritize and, and get involved in these organizations. And, you know, because we, we, there's all this talk about sustainability. And to me, sustainability is having a pump that lasts a really long time. You know, if you're talking about an energy efficient pump that is, consuming less energy that lasts a really long time, that's helping the future generations. So that's sustainability. Um, we don't market it. You know, we don't have that big budget because we're a small company, but we do it. You know, we do it behind the scenes. And to me, that's what matters. And hopefully the more opportunities I get, the, the more I can get the word out. Yeah, well, I think participating in organizations is absolutely a way both to build, you know, your personal strengths there and knowledge of the industry, but also making connections and bringing your team along uh, will just add to that. And I've seen that in really any organization that I've been a part of, um, if, you know, you're allowed to go in and and participate in the group, then you can make a difference there. And uh, so I love that. I love that you jumped in and um, I, th I think that that is the only way that you can really utilize these places. Uh, but then, you know, bringing that fresh um, ideas to the table, right, that they may have not have thought about, um, especially with the calculator itself, um, and just knowing that this is how you see it, and these are some of the ways that you've helped solve problems, is going to help the industry. So uh, just thankful that I got to reconnect with you and get to share Absolutely. your story with everyone. Um Tell us a little bit about the the pump itself. Um, I have, sure. you know, yeah. Tell yeah. Us so, you know, the, the product has been in the States for 40 years and it was sold through a distributor and the technology is adapting to the wastewater. So the wastewater is changing. The wastewater, there's less water, there's more uh, flushable wipes. And so our pump is a screw centrifugal pump. And we, uh, our founder invented the impeller and it started in, in Lima, Peru. It was invented to pump fish. So it was invented to pump live fish. Then he took it back to Switzerland and said, what am I going to do with this product that I invented? So he said, all right, let's try the wastewater market because there's always stringy material, long fibrous material. So that's, you know, that's where it has succeeded. You can have a really great product, but if nobody knows about it, you're not going to it's not gonna be out there. You're not gonna sell a lot of it. So that's what we're trying to do. So in 2016, we started our own operations here in suburbs of Chicago, Aurora, Illinois. And we have a 32,000 square foot facility. We do testing, engineering. We have about 21 employees and we build this product and then we sell it in the US and Canada. And so the screw centrifugal pump, it's really good at handling solids and it's a high efficiency. If you're gonna take away two things from the pump, it's handling solids and high efficiency. So anywhere where you are pumping solids, collections inside the plant, sludge, or anything that you have um, are concerned with uh, shear sensitive. So if you have a shear sensitive product, 
again, like oily water or a sludge, this is a great application. So the pump itself, I don't have to sell it. I just talk about the technology. You know, we bridge the gap between the non-clogs where they stop at three to 4% solid content. We are from four up to eight, 10%. So we're bridging the gap of non-clogs and then the positive displacement pumps. It's a unique technology and it's just, I enjoy presenting this because it's the word has to get out there that we have an incredible pump that people just need to take a look and evaluate. And he likes to call it the best pump, right? Definitely the best <laughs> pump. I mean, hey, the, the 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 pump speaks for itself. I just let it, you know, do the talking. I love it. I love it. So um, anyway, thank you for, for all of that. And I do have to do a little rapid fire. It's the fun right. part for me. Um, what is your favorite book? Um, this is an old time book, um, but Rock Johnson, I read his um, biography back in the day and I really enjoyed it. And that was before even he was in the movies. Okay. That's awesome. And what about your favorite music or band? My favorite band right now, well, it's always been Coldplay. I was going to say a toss up between that and Imagine Dragons, but. I saw Coldplay um, in Birmingham. That that was a, I love that concert. Yeah. Um, Okay. So best advice that you've ever received. Um, Best advice. Always be prepared for like a meeting, you know, go into a meeting, knowing what the other side is going to ask. Um, think about what they got to ask. And that way you never get caught off guard. Yeah. And then uh, the little trickier, I guess, is what advice would you give others as they're coming into our industry? Um, find a mentor, find someone that go, that you see that goes, man, that, that person knows a lot. Um, and they're not just, you know, sales, um, you want someone that's honest and, and doesn't always have the right answer. You want someone that goes, I might have to look that up. I'm not sure, but find that person and, and be a sponge and, and take everything that you can from, from them and then find the next person and the next person and the next person and find who they are in the company and in the industry and just gain that information that way. Yeah. Uh, always be a learner. Oh, absolutely. Now, um, I will give you the last word here. Is there anything else that you want uh, our listeners to know? No, I just, um, I'm excited to get more involved in, uh, with your company, with, with the industry as a whole. So, you know, this is us coming out from behind the scenes of just being busy and actually getting involved. So really excited. And thanks for having uh, me on the, on this. Thank you for being here. And uh, everybody share this podcast uh, episode with your friends, somebody who is new to the industry, emerging leaders. Uh, Tomas is going to be one of those names that you'll hear over and over. I already know it because he is leading the way here. Uh, Thank you again, everybody, for showing up every week to listen to the podcast, like and subscribe, do all that great stuff so that it makes it easy for you. You just, you know, open your phone and there we are. Uh, every Monday. And so until next time, be empowering.